Disaster Risk Management Experts from Bhutan, Nepal and Pakistan at a recent high-level regional policy action dialogue under the theme from Cryosphere to Coast discussed at length the adverse impacts of climate change on Cryosphere in the Hindu Kush Himalaya Karakoram region and possible disaster risk management measures to cope with the impacts the communities, infrastructure, and ecosystems. Addressing the opening session of the three-day event held in Pakistan's capital city of Islamabad from September 11th to 13th, they emphasized the need for enhancing interregional collaboration among the Hindu Kush Himalaya Karakoram regional countries to protect lives and livelihoods of the people and fragile mountain ecosystems from the exacerbating fallouts of climate crisis. The participating government officials, technical experts and members of civil society organizations from Nepal, Bhutan and Pakistan, however, agreed to further strengthen cross-border cooperation in disaster risk reduction, sharing knowledge and technologies for enhanced disaster resilience and establishing a regional network for non-stop support and collaboration. Kathmandu-based International Center for Integrated Mountain Development, Civil Society Coalition for Climate Change, and Pakistan's Ministry of Climate Change and Environmental Coordination jointly organized the three-day crucial event, primarily aimed to conduct discussions on sharing expertise and best practices in disaster preparedness and response from counterparts in Pakistan. The three-day intensive event saw experts exploring potential areas of collaboration, including addressing various mountain-specific disasters, including the glacial lake outburst floods, sharing critical equipment, and capacity building in search and rescue, addressing the inaugural session of the event as a chief guest, coordinator to Pakistani Prime Minister. Romina Kershid Alam highlighted adversely the Hindu Kush Himalaya Karakoram region's cryosphere is bearing the brunt of the global warming. Rising temperature are causing more rapid um, effect on that, that the glaciers are getting more rapidly, uh, you know, retreat and they're melting in a way. So this would reduce freshwater availability increase glacier lake outburst floods, which we all know that the GLOF and the raise of the vulnerability of downstream communities. We are already seeing the impact of the erratic weather, frequent floods and water shortage affecting agriculture and energy. It requires a response that cut across sectors. She hoped that this much needed event would come up with coping measures and a roadmap to tackle the challenges being faced by the region's cryosphere and its communities. But we still have a long way to go to, uh, and I think this event uh, can play a great pivotal role. Uh, while in this, we are going to discuss about the further steps that how we can, uh, you know, take more further steps and for the betterment. And I think it's the most important thing that how we can learn from each other's best practices when it comes to the international community or region-wise solutions we talk. Director General of the Kathmandu-based International Center for Integrated Mountain Development spoke on how badly that negative impacts of climate change on the region's cryosphere are already affecting water flow patterns. Climate change in many ways is about water. Too much or too little water. That is the story. Too much water at the wrong time and at wrong places and in wrong places. And we have floods destroying life and livelihoods. Too little water and we have droughts and heat waves with equally devastating consequences. He also suggested policy measures to protect water resources from wasting to meet household, agriculture, industrial, water and sanitation needs. The question then is how can we save water from the season of plenty to the season of scarcity? Water for drinking, water for irrigation, water for sanitation and water for energy and industries. Technologies and innovations are there. But scaling up and scaling out is still very weak. Earlier, Executive Director for the Civil Society Coalition for Climate Change put spotlight on the overarching objectives of the regional gather with key focus on highlighting the importance of cryosphere. The purpose of the gathering co-organized by EC Mode, MOC, CNEC and CSCCC is twofold. The first is to highlight the importance of the cryosphere. 
and take a deep dive into how and why and what we need to do to tackle climate change impacts on water in its frozen state. We would like, with the help of our distinguished delegates, to move beyond identifying gaps and explore options for implementation that are realistic and measurable. Delivering presentation during the opening session of the Regional Dialogue, Dr. Arun Bokhtashrestha, a senior climate change specialist and strategic group lead for reducing climate and environmental risks at ISIMED, said shed light on how rapidly region is heating up, posing grave threats for the glacier and water flows. That this region is under stress. Um, the whole region is under rapid warming, 0.28 degrees Celsius. Um, Pakistan, uh, according to the previous NAT communication, and I think this has been updated, I don't have the updated data, is uh, warming at 0.39 degrees Celsius per decade which is comparable or higher than the global average warming. So we are warming faster than uh, average global warming. In terms of precipitation, extremes are increasing and erratic rainfall patterns are uh, happening. And uh, what we see is that both uh, warming and precipitation uh, extremes are likely to increase in the future. And then the warming, uh, in terms of warming, uh, this is a global phenomena that elevation dependent warming is happening, but that's very much present in our region as well. So what does it mean in terms of cryosphere? In a 1.5 degree to 2 degree world, by the end of the century, we'll lose about 30 to 50% of our uh, you know, glacier ice compared to 2015. And then if we go by three to four degree warming scenario, it could be as high as 55 to 75%, which is quite, uh, quite a very uh, serious, serious kind of scenario. Chairman of Pakistan's National Disaster Management Authority said that rich countries responsible for the global heating must act to slow down the it. Countries around the HKH region are not the only ones responsible for the climate change or the impact. And there's somebody else who has to take effect or to, to take control of the measures so that these can be slowed down. This melting can be slowed down. Some of the impact of the uh, the adverse uh, the temperature scenario that I showed you in the models can be addressed. And this has to come from beyond Pakistan, beyond this region, and from the global response too. Nilo Fahafiz, a senior official from Pakistan's National Food Security and Research Ministry, said that the climate change-induced vulnerabilities of the farming community are increasing as a result of rapidly vanishing cryosphere. Frequent floods droughts and erratic weather patterns are taking a toll on our farmers and their product. While there have been some efforts to introduce climate resilient farming techniques, the adoption has been slow. We must step our support for farmers by providing them with the tools and knowledge to adapt to these changing conditions. She said collaboration among stakeholders is crucial to help farmers adapt. In every challenge, there lies an opportunity. We have the chance to strengthen our research and development sector, to encourage innovation, and to bring the latest agriculture technologies to our farmers. Chairman of the Federal Flood Commission in Islamabad spoke the importance of water accounting for better management, conservation, an efficient use of rapidly depleting water resources. We are talking a lot about water telemetry and how well we can undertake the water accounting in order to have a good water surface water estimation available to us. And at the same time, to have an estimation of uh, the melting of the glaciers as well as uh, the cryosphere impacts by virtue of the climate change. After 2022 monsoon, we were given the assignment to undertake updation of a National Flood Protection Plan for, And specifically, we were asked to introduce the concepts of managing the hill torrents as well as the uh, upper portion of the uh, country in order to manage the flows from various small rivers while they are entering into the upstream portion of the Tarbella Dam. Aisha Humera Chaudhry, top key senior government official at the Pakistani Climate Change an environmental coordination ministry cautioned that climate action is must to address the adverse impacts of the climate change. We have 
a narrow window of opportunity to act. The scientific evidence is irrefutable and the economic rationale is compelling. We must prioritize climate resilience, sustainable development, and the well-being of our people. Let us use this policy action dialogue to forge stronger partnerships, develop innovative solutions, and commit to actions that will safeguard our environment, our economy, and our future. Speakers suggested various policy measures, emphasizing the urgent need to bridge the policy implementation gap through enhanced collaboration among Hindu Kush Himalaya Karakoram regional countries for tackling climate change impacts on cryosphere, water, food security, and achieving disaster risk reduction goals.